have here is a called a Mantis. This is a 12-foot version called the T12. Um, it is an unmanned surface vessel. Also has the ability to multi-motor to future date and uh, can be controlled from anywhere around the world. On this particular vessel right now, today, we're showing what's called the Sea Flare 230, electro-optical infrared camera system. That's the base part for all the visual above water stuff. On top of that, we're also showcasing our partner FLIRS. It's called a Black Hornet. It's a nanocopter. This can actually be flown in and out of Mantis in remote locations, once again, anywhere in the world. Right now, the Mantis, we've been in various missions uh, around the country, San Diego, San Francisco, North Carolina. It's been utilized by the Army, the Navy, the Marine Corps for various missions. The main advantage of a Mantis is that it's very adaptable. So it's adaptable, it's modular, but on top of that, it has a very extreme performance envelope. So not only can it go very slow, very covert, also for either intercepts or for if you need to get away from something or you need to get somewhere fast, you can do that also. So it's very adaptable. And the payloads and the communications are very modular. So we are adaptable and modular, interoperable, pretty much anything. We're very agnostic with equipment. So very quick turnarounds with changing payloads. You can do one mission, it's an ISR mission, bring it back 10 minutes later, send it out on a mine mission. I mean, it's very adaptable and very uh, quick at changing its payload. This is our, uh, it's a model of our Seaguard uh, decoy launcher. It's a decoy launcher for the 130 millimeter standard NATO uh, decoys. Um, this is a model of uh, the DL60 product. We have a larger model called the DL12T, and we also do uh, single directional Mark 137 launchers. Um, so this is, uh, this is just a model of it. The idea behind the product is that it pretty much launches everything out there that is based on the 130 millimeter standard. Uh, so, so this is a, this is a way to get your choice of uh, of uh, decoys fired in an in an effective way. So that could be anything from you know Cameron countermeasures, two one fours, two one six, could be uh, Rheinmetall uh, bullfighter. Uh, it also does uh, underwater decoys, uh, which is a new and uh, interesting area for us. Uh, we've been putting this on ship classes all over the world. We have more than 100 systems uh, sailing today. Uh, anything from our home market, uh, Danish Navy, we have it sailing here in uh, the US. Uh, we have a lot of customers out in Asia, uh, in Australia, Indonesia, Malaysia, and so on. So there's a lot of navies uh, nowadays uh, using this, uh, this, uh, this uh, system here. Uh, this is fitted on uh, some of the LCS uh, ships. Uh, which has been an interesting uh, venture for us. We've just announced uh, that the uh, US Navy has uh, agreed to operate the AUV-62 anti-submarine warfare target produced by Saab for three months beginning in August of this year which is a very exciting opportunity for Saab. Um, the, uh, the project's been uh, underway for some time. We've been working on it. We've had um, US operators over to Sweden. We've trained them for four days in the operation of uh, AUV 62AT. And, uh, and as I say, the, uh, the, the program will start in August for three months. Now, AUV 62 is a derivative of uh, the Type 62 torpedo it's an anti-submarine warfare target. It uh, operates autonomously for between 8 and 12 hours um, and it acts as uh, both an active and passive sonar uh, acoustic target. Um, it, it replicates the submarine that the trainer wants it to be, so you effectively can dial on the signature of the submarine you want it to have. Uh, and then I suppose one of the, the big pluses of AUV-62 is that after you've done the exercise, you can download all the data from that exercise and then analyse how well the, uh, the, the, com the combatants in the exercise have performed.
BESER is the next generation radar for the Navy that's leveraging what we've done uh, on AMDR for SPY-6 with our scalable S-band architecture and taking that forward and bringing that across the fleet, designing essentially two variants, a, a rotating variant of nine RMAs, uh, which is intended for the amphibs, uh, starting with LHA-8, as well as we have a fixed phase variant with three phases that's uh, being designed for the CVNs going forward, uh, starting with CVN 79 and 80. Um, quick update on the program since we last got together here. Uh, we're about a year and a half into the program at this point. We went through CDR uh, last August, only a year after contract award. Uh, I'll just come back to that's very much, we got to that milestone, major milestone, that quickly again because of the leveraging of what we've done on SPY 6 to date and bringing that RMA-based uh, hardware architecture forward, bringing the scalable software architecture forward, and scaling it for the ESER mission and platforms. We are currently building our engineering development model, uh, which is a variant one, uh, rotating ver uh, version. All the materials on order we're actually starting to assemble, and we'll be going into integration with that uh, in the first quarter of this year. Graphically, just to kind of show you real quickly here, and what you see on the wall here is, is Raytheon's presence with ESER across, across the fleet on the multiple platforms here with the amphibs where you see ESER on the rotating variant uh, up here on the mast. Um, for the CVNs, you see it here uh, with a fixed phase variant. Again, this is three, three phases on that where the, uh, the single with a single phase rotator on the amphibs, as well as on uh, LXR and the other amphib uh, platforms. The Navy has recently designated ESER the variant two the fixed phase variant for the carriers uh, is what's been designated by the Navy for the tier one radar for the FFGX guided, mis uh, guided missile frigate program. And uh, that's uh, where we'll be heading forward, taking that same, again, getting all the benefits that ESER was, has, was intended to provide and is providing in terms of a mature starting point, taking all the investment that the Navy and, and uh, Raytheon have made to date in this technology taking that V2 design we're already doing for the carriers and now configuring that uh, for the frigate mission, uh, providing uh, the en enhanced uh, air warfare mission basically, as the Navy noted, both in the uh, local as well as in the frigate support escort type, uh, type role here.